Okay, we're recording. Thank you, Netta, for coming joining us today on this faculty spotlight. <laughs> My pleasure, Julia. I love talking to you. And I love talking about teaching. I love it. And you're one of I the people it. who always ask me about it. So well, I was hoping that more people could uh, benefit from hearing about uh, what you're doing. So we're going to record this and share it more broadly. So tell me about um, your class. Okay, so the I mean, I teach lots of classes, but the one that we were speaking about is a large first year introduction to literature course. It's the code is um, ENGL 1P94, lead, reading literature today. So one of those context credits, 200 person classes with like seminars for everybody. And so, and how your seminars about 20, 20 yeah. people. So per, it's like yeah. 200 in the lecture, two lecture hours a week, and then one week of 20 person seminars. So that's like 10 seminars. Right. And so you taught it last year and you're going to teach it again. Yeah. So I, I mean, I've taught first year at base almost every year that I've been here, but this is the new, we, we split our first year classes from full year to half year. So this is only the second time I've done this sort of half course version of it. Um, and, you know, and also like I had a sabbatical for a year and called all the things, all things and so the version of it that I taught last year was a redesign um and so now I'm going to do the second version of the re redesigned class um and I liked how it worked last year quite well um although I did make a few changes to it this year I'm 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 always I'm always fiddling always fiddling little tweaks as you little get tweaks. feedback and see and how they I do. guess and, and I guess one of the reasons that um we thought it might be interesting to chat is because um, all the things that I that I've been working on are assignment structures. Um, um, to some extent, just like trying to meet students where they are um, today, like where they're coming from in high school in terms of their knowledge base and their like their skill set, um, but also just recognizing um, where we are um, in the world. <laughs> <laughs> with respect to um, software that produces writing, right? Machine generated writing, um, which is what it is, right? Like I know AI is the, is the, is the, like the little phrase we use, but like the issue is this, you know, um, we now have software tools, which are fairly sophisticated in terms of just like spitting out writing. Right. And in a course, well, I mean, I think a lot of university courses um, have writing-based assignments, but, you know, so like that's not new. Um, but like there's lots of different kinds of writing. And certainly in the Department of Literature, like the kinds of writing assignments that are core to the discipline, i.e. the analytical essay, um, we, it's just like thinking about like what this new set of, um, available software tools, like how that shifts the way I think about what I want my students to learn. Um, and, and it's, it's like a really interesting moment, right? But like, there's been lots of interesting moments, like, like Google was an interesting moment and, and, um, uh, I don't Wikipedia. know, like, 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 like spell check was an interesting moment like like do you know i mean i know that sounds a little glib but i remember the crisis minor crisis around spell check like no no no, you have to know how to spell without checking what right yeah <laughs> or right at, without having a like the computer check for you anyway um so yes so i have been thinking about that and yeah and as i said i started working with some ideas like i've always been a very my my um way of teaching essay writing in first year has always been very scaffolded it's always been very recursive um i think that writing an essay a critical analytical essay is one of the hardest things that anybody ever has to do um i think because you just have so many balls in the air all the time. Like you have to have like content and you have to have structure and you have to have like argument and, and it's got to 
it, you've got to think about audience. So it's really, really hard always. So I've always thought about doing it in stages and that has been more relevant, made more relevant to me because it allows me to talk to the students about the difference between human generated analysis and machine generated analysis, which I posit to them is really not very, it's just not very um, interesting. Like it's just really, really, the machine is really flat. Like that's what it's for. Um, like it's, it's Mad Libs. It's, it's, or it's like, it's like, it tries to flatten everything out and um, give an answer that has almost no point of view. Um, and I think that, so, okay, so I just, I'm just like going around in circles, but I can talk about like specifically what I do practically, and then we can maybe have a couple little chats about why I think it might be an interesting, useful thing. So I think one of the first things that I do, like stepping back from um, just the specific assignments is um, I think it's really, really important in getting into these discussions with students is to show them that you know what they're, you know what's out there, right? Like you can't, you have to. <laughs> so in our first seminar, um, you know, as a kind of icebreaker, um, I give each seminar group, so I've got like two, four documents, two of which are machine generated essays and two of which are human generated essays, i.e. I wrote them. I just like wrote sample papers. And their job in seminar on that first day is to be able to figure out like which, which are which. And then more importantly, to say how they know. Like, how do you know? And which is a really go good, fun opportunity for them to like be clever and go like, oh, I can see that this is like, these are wrong. Um, these quotations actually don't exist anywhere or this is incorrect information. But um, but some of it is like, it looks pretty good, but it's really flat. Like it's really flat. It's really general. Um, machine generated writing is a program, right? So it's extremely programmatic and it doesn't take them very long as a group to kind of go, oh yeah, I see these words coming up again and again, whereas these two essays are like pretty idiosyncratic um, because they're, they're anyway. Um, and so it's like a fun day, but it's also got a really important punchline, which is like, okay, so if it took, if you people who have been in university for about 15 minutes and you were able to figure this out, like, what do you think the chances are that a person who has devoted their life to thinking about knowledge production and scholarship and writing will not be able to figure this out, right? Like, so it's like a little bit of a, like, let's, let's, let's be really transparent that we're going to, we're going to be able to notice. Um, but also, like, so there's that punchline, but there's also, like, why would you want to produce this really, really flat, empty, um, not particularly interesting writing, right? So that leads into the scaffolded um, essay work that we do. So the way I did it last year is, okay, so... Um, we the it's a genre course, so we talk a lot about like literary terminology and like how to look at literature and talk about the way it works as a special form of writing. So I, I introduced them to a whole bunch of um, um, ways of thinking about literature, and then so about a er, third of the way of the um, through the course, they did, last year I did it as a, a bright space short answer quiz. Um, where I gave them two short stories that they'd never seen before. They had to choose one of them and they had to like, just like do some quick short answer questions. And I didn't give them very long. I gave them like 90 minutes. And one of the points I made to them last year, and last year there were super, super short stories this year. I'm going to have to give them more time because they're longer stories. Anyway, um, is that I think that that first, we talk a lot about like levels of reading. And I think that first, um, response one has to literature, to any kind of art, um, is important to register because art is meant to produce a response, right? So we have to like make note of our response. Um, it's not where we're going to finish, but it is where we're going to start. So it's like 
very quick, like, and they're marked on um, their ability to sort of make use of some of the vocabulary that they've been introduced to. Um, they're graded on just like they're like noticing things in the in the um, in the stories. Um, and that and like understanding like the kinds of things they want to be looking for and like that's it right so at this point in that and and so what so that's what I did last year this year as I said I, I need to give them more time because the I couldn't find like two and a half page stories that I liked as much so the stories are longer so I'm like okay so it's gonna it's not gonna be a quiz so much but it's gonna be a, an assignment with a very quick turnaround time like two days and they have to um spend a few hours on it and I'll talk a little bit more about my work log idea which is like a new thing that I've added anyway so first assignment is very process oriented and the whole point there is that like it would be pointless to bring in um machine a machine generated response because it, it would do the work you would have to do the work of them like getting the machine and then like pulling back the machine like I don't want I don't want paragraphs. I don't want full sentences. Like I want notes, right? Um, and notes ha and students feel comfortable with that. They don't have to worry about structure. They don't have to worry about grammar. They have to worry about and like and they need to be showing the vocabulary that I've introduced them to, right? So it's like it's very the whole point is that first look is idiosyncratic. It's got a point of view and it's rough. It's rough and you have to credit the roughness of it. So then we move from that to um, an essay template. And so it's like, instead of writing the essay, like I have this whole template and that has like over years of teaching, I, I came to this idea that like the big problem for students is they think they have to start an essay at the beginning. And really you need to start an analytical essay in the middle. Like you have to, you have to figure out what, like what, your body paragraphs are going to be like what the 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 real real nuts and bolts of it are in the middle and you have to structure that and only when you've done that can you go back and go okay now i need to like do an introduction and do you know what i mean it's like it's a very it's a very um confusing process so i created this template to make it easier so it's like it's not a blank page there's like boxes and you're like filling it's like you know very modular you're you're filling in um boxes and that by the way is the assignment that is worth the most of the three um and is i give the tas the most time to mark because it is like that is your essay it's just and again at, for that part i do want full sentences um i do want like but they don't have to pay as much attention to style like that's not important they're thinking about structure and they're thinking about content um and they've already done like this rough work and it, again it's like in order to if you would if you if you wanted to get a machine to do this work it would be so hard it would take you way more time it's like way more efficient to just do the thing that i ask you to do and it also i what i like about the template is that if it gives students who for whatever reason don't complete the 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 assignment whether it's because like they started too late or they're confused or whatever They've got parts of it done. Like you can hand in a template, which is not like you with with. And I say like you'll you'll get, you know, marks are if it's incomplete, you'll lose some grades. But it's not that same thing of like you can't hand in an essay or doesn't feel comfortable to hand in an essay with like one paragraph that says still need to think about this. Even though me as a writer, I do that all the time, like all all the time. Right. So I want to give students the permission to understand that process works differently for everyone. Right. And so the template allows for students who, to continue working, even if they don't have a like, even if some parts are messy and some parts. And, and it also gives the TAs a easier time. They can go like this, this section. Amazing. Actually, this module, you need to move this here because the logic would make more sense and whatever. So it's all very like, and I've got color coding. It's a, it's a thing. And so finally, they get lots of feedback on that. And then the final assignment is like, clean it up. 
take everything from the template, all your feedback and smooth it out. And now we're worried. Now we're thinking about style and now we're thinking about formatting and now we're thinking about proper citation and now we're thinking like like now we're making it clean right and the and so that's the final assignment which they get some feedback on but not nearly as much as they get on the template and the last thing that they have to do as part of this is they have to write like a little response to feedback right so they have to say like this is what i this is like what i got back from tas um, or coming to office hours on my template. This is how I like thought about that. This is what I changed. This is what I like couldn't change, whatever. And like, also they have to do that response to feedback. And just like I say, just one or two sentences on like how this process felt. And that's a bonus mark. That's 5%. You do it, you get it. Like I am a huge fan of bonus marks or like, just like, cause this work is hard. This it's hard, and so if anybody honors the process, I'm going to reward them for it. So that's, that's what great. I did last year. Uh, what I want to know is how did you prepare your TAs to be consistent in their approach? Um. Well, I, I like I'm kind of a control freak. I don't know if you know that about me. So I like didn't. my TA, you didn't. <laughs> oh, I am super very much so. Um, and so like my class, my first year class is always like very top heavy lesson plans for every seminar. Um, and for each stage of marking, I, um, cause I, uh, I like mark some samples for all of them and I show them. And so, and I show them the samples from everybody. So they've got like five or six things to work with every single time. Um, and and I always, you know, and and it's and again, I get my TA team on board with my philosophy, which is that um, when we're talking about like marking drafts, it, it's not, like we're I want to re I want to really break down the process of how we write, and like really, we're not like uh, you. We are not marking for grammar and style and things like that at the earlier stages. Like we have to, we have to talk about other stuff. Um, I don't know. I don't know that I think they were just into it. Like they, like anybody who's TAing for a class like this has been through the process. So this is kind of just defamiliarizing that process and saying like, let's honor all the, the parts of it. Um, and pay attention to it because also that is the part that cannot be replicated by a machine like it's really it's it because it is an intelligence it's a point of view it's thinking it's finding things it's observing weird stuff in stories like the weirder the better right like the more crunchy it's like not a technical term but it's like that's what i always talk about um and so by the time they get to the thing that has to look clean which is what the machine makes everything look, the machines make everything look shiny. But by the time the students in this class get to that point, they have all the material, right? So they're, they, they, they're just smoothing out their own stuff rather than having to go elsewhere for some, for the shiny thing. And so you're gonna change it this year a little bit? Some it's just, okay, so as I said, not a quiz, it's going to be right. so what they're going to do instead of short answers is they're going to do annotations and then short answers. So and I'm going to have them do it by like it's I want I want like physical. Show me and and show me pictures what you did. Um, or if you want to use some kind of a PDF um, annotation software, you can do that. But I want like I want the images of the messy work. Um, and I give them a time limit for it. Like you should be spending like 60 to 90 minutes tops on this, like making notes all over things. And then they do the, they do the, the same questions. And again, I want it quickly. Um, and so that's what the first stage is. And the other thing that I've added in is that, um, instead of just doing that reflection at the end, what we now have is a work log. 
And like, I'm going to, it's going to be a template again. I'm super, I love templates. And it's like, here's the first thing you did. How long did it take? Like, when did you do it? How long did it take? Some notes on your process, right? And like every stage of this is going to be logged. And then they'll have like a little section at the end of the log to do that feedback reflection. And they're, they hand in the log at every stage. And then they get that big mark um, at the end just for handing in their complete log. And so the log is new. You've not, have you used the log that before? Is new. The log is new. It used to just be the feedback report, mm -hmm. but now it's, it's, they're going to have like hand in, just continue mm -hmm. to fill out their work log. And I think that's, I started using work logs in other classes, um, upper level classes, just to get students to think about how long things actually take. Mm -hmm. Um, because I think that, and again, that's sort of, and you try to, you try to mark that with um, things like this is worth this much and this is worth this much. Right. But I want to make it really, really clear. And I try to tell students, I think this is going to take this long. Right. Or there's a range there. Um, because, but I want them to say like, oh, I, I thought this would take this long, but it actually took me this long. Or I thought this would like be really, really hard. But actually when I came around to it, this was, this was pretty straightforward. Um, because especially first year students, but I think all students, right. They don't know how long things take. Why would they like, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's for, for a lot of things, it's their first time doing it. So I think work logs are useful for, um, for teaching them something about time management um, in a way that is concrete rather than abstract. Um, and also just, again, like reinforcing this idea, yeah, like this is hard, this is challenging, this is time consuming. So yeah, like, I know, I know. I'm, I'm gonna start doing a work log, I love it. <laughs> I, you, I, I, my day, my life is work logs. Like my, I'm constantly saying, this is what I have to do. This is when I think I can do it. How much did I get done? Like it's, I'm, or else I get overwhelmed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I get really overwhelmed. So this is also just, and I talk to students about that too. Like the work log should also be there to make you feel better about, to first of all, to recognize like, wait, I have done work. And just like, oh, wow, that took a really super long time. I'm going to have to plan better for that. Right. It's like right. they're they're It's first year. They're figuring this stuff out. And I want to give them the tools to support them figuring it out. That's great. Is there any other um, insights or things you want to share that would be helpful to other people? In particular, we had a lot of people who are teaching large classes and they're just trying to look at for great strategies, I guess. Um, We'll just tack this on as another question uh, about <laughs> engagement. How is how are you doing for attendance? Amazing. Okay. Really, really good. And like, and I say that with a sense of humility and and joy. Um, I feel really lucky because I do. I record all my lectures. Okay. And I post them, and I post slides. Like I am one of those. And you That's, haven't found that detracts them I, from no, attending. The, I would say the opposite. I know that sounds counterintuitive, um, but it comes down to like a, an ethics of care, and I want I want them I want them to be able to learn in the class. Like I want it to feel accessible. I want it to feel. Uh, I want them to feel cared for. And so because I, like if a student gets sick, has a personal emergency, just goes through a period where they're like, I'm not interested for like a week and a half, they can catch up. No problem. Like I don't have, what I don't have is drop off, right? Wow. Where you have students who are like there with you and then something happens because life, and then they're afraid to come back because they're lost and they're embarrassed about that or they feel defeated. Anybody can catch up in my class because the recordings are all there. And by the way, it's not only students who are away that use them, everybody uses them. Like all my quizzes are not timed and I encourage them. Like the the whole the rule with the quizzes is you can only do it once. So do it properly. And so you you have like like students who like go to lecture, take all the notes, then they go back and watch the lecture again before they do the quiz. And that seems to me like win, win, win. Like because 
they are they are personally <laughs> like realizing like I want to learn more like I want to review this I don't have to even ask them to do it I just give them so for me engagement counterintuitively make your course as accessible to folks who for whatever reason can't be there and the ones who are there will feel cared for um and and they'll know that if anything happens um the circle is still open they can always rejoin that's great what are there things that happen in lecture like what does that look like that is um lecture is okay so i talk a lot i talk really fast there's always slides which are there mostly to keep me on track because I talk too much. But I always have every 20 minutes, I, I try to have some kind of interactive something mm. because I can't listen to somebody for 20 minutes or more than 20 minutes. Like I start getting distracted. So they um, have to I, talk to each other or do they do a device thing? What do they do? They usually talk to me. We do okay. like a back and forth. Yeah, we do a back and forth. I don't do anything fancy. I don't do clickers. I don't do um, I don't do group work like we just don't have time. It's only 50 minutes. It goes by like that. So it's just usually a five minute like let's chat. And it's really important to ask questions that are um, open ended. Like sometimes I do like little little testy questions, but you know, we we sometimes I work. We're working through things. Um, but it's still, I mean, I'm not going to, like, I'm still, I still lecture. Like, it's, if it's a 45, if it's a 45 minute class, because it takes a couple of minutes to get in and out of it, I would say, you know, 35 to 40 of those minutes, it's me talking, right? It's, and, and I acknowledge that that's hard. So I try to give them, I, like, I post my slides onto Brightspace, like, a couple of hours before. I, I try to do whatever I can so that they can feel that they're in it. Okay, that's great. Well, we've and, and, we <laughs> and seminar seminars are very activity oriented. Like they have to do stuff for it. Like right. so, seminars are much more structured for them to do work. Like they have to come in having done work, and there's like these are the things you're going to do in seminar, and it's like very like activity oriented. Whereas and, so that's, and that's where they all get planned out, and you tell the the TAs exactly what that yes, looks like. I yeah. have a lesson plan for every single one, and I make a little short recording for them about the lesson plan, like every week, so that they just that's just easier because there's usually a lot of TAs, and we it's hard to find a time to meet. So I just like record something and say like this is how I expect this lesson to go. Right, great. And so far, it's been going well. Your feedback was how was your yeah. Feedback? Good. It was good. Yeah. It went the class went really, really well last year. Um, you know, and again, that feels like it's we had a great group, great group. So some of it is always chemistry, but I think that um I have a pretty good, very robust structure to the course. And I and this is I I feel like it's like taking care of you you need to have very firm boundaries in place so that people feel safe to play. Right. Right. It's like, it's like a really, really, really good improv game or like some kind of drama game where yes. it's like, these and are the very specific like rules. And, and once we all know what they are, once we all know what the borders are, like everything inside feels safe. That's great. Um, we're at our 30 minutes, so I'm going to thank you so much and I'm going to stop recording. <laughs> Thanks. Of course. I got worried because it